Hi, I'm Bill Kinney and this is my 109th video on problem solving for actuarial exam 2 on financial math. In this video we're going to look at an amortization schedule for a two-year bond bought at a discount. We'll be constructing the amortization schedules, uh, calculating totals, and comparing with formulas that we looked at in the last couple of videos. Video number 107 and 108 really should be watched before this video, so I'll post links to them to, uh, in the upper right corner here, especially video number 107 where we looked at the same kind of thing, except that the bond was bought at a premium. Now, when you buy at a premium, you are paying more than the redemption amount. That might sound bad to you as an investor, but it is made up for in a sense that the coupon payments that you get are kind of high, relatively speaking. On the flip side, when you buy the bond at a discount, when you pay a, an amount lower than the redemption value, then that sounds good, but your coupon payments are typically lower, especially if the bond is redeemable at par, as most bonds are. So here is the situation. A thousand dollar, two year, four percent bond, semi-annual coupons. It's redeemable at par, so the semi-annual coupon rate is two percent. Uh, it's redeemable at par, you're going to get a thousand dollars at the end of two years. You'll get that thousand dollars, the face value. Its yield is 8% convertible semi-annually, so that would be 4% per half year. When a bond is redeemable at par and the coupon rate is lower than the yield rate, then you're going to be, end up buying it at a discount. You will pay less than the face value, the redemption, which is the same as the redemption value here. And again, that sounds good, but your coupons are going to be kind of low here. It's a low coupon rate. Again, on the flip side, if your coupon rate is higher than the yield rate, you're going to buy at a premium, and, but that's made up for by the fact that you get larger coupons. Our goal is to construct the amortization schedule that you see below here to show the amortization of the discount. How does it change over time? The outstanding balances, also called book values, just after coupons are paid at the end of each half year. Also include total for the interest paid, the payments themselves, and the principal repaid. I'm putting principal repaid in quotes here. I did not do that in videos 107 and 108 because it really was a principal repaid in those cases. Now think about uh, the bond as you loaning money to the company or government. They are borrowing money for, from you. When you pay a premium, you're giving them more money you're going to get than you're going to get at the end. The coupon payments are kind of high. They are paying you, in fact, um, not just interest with those coupon payments, but they're also paying part of the principal to reduce their balance. So it really makes sense to call it a re principal repaid in that situation. When you buy it at a discount, you are giving them less money than they're, you're going to get at the end from them. They're going to pay back more at the end. Um, when they pay you the coupons, they're really not covering their interest payments. And so the balance goes up over time. It's really not a principal repaid. You might call it a principal repossessed or something, but it's fortunate that <laughs> repaid and repossessed both start with REP and we can still call this PRT. I'm going to treat these as negative values though in the table so we can use the same formulas. Principal repaid, sometimes called accumulation of discount, also called writing up the bond when you buy it at a discount. When you buy it at a premium, you can call it writing down the bond instead of writing it up. We will also confirm some of the entries in the table with these formulas. And right away, we'll go ahead and use formula A here, which is our main formula to get the balance at time zero, book value at time zero, which is the same as the price. Price is balance at time zero or book value at time zero. That's the face value. I'm assuming F is equal to C. It's redeemable at par. That's a thousand plus a thousand times R minus J. R is 0 0.02, half of that. J is 0 0.04, half of the 8%. T here is 0, so this is really A N J with N equal to 4. It's a two-year bond with semi-annual coupons. Let's go ahead and figure this out. I will just go ahead and write what this is right away. This is going to be negative 20 here. What will A4 be? 1 plus j is 1.04. j again is 0.04, coming from half of the 8%. 
Take the reciprocal, that's v, raise it to the fourth power, subtract from one, divide by 0 0.04. A4 is about 3.629895. We used that quantity in the last video, last couple videos. Times 20, this is what you would subtract from 1,000 to see the price is bought at a discount. And I made it in such a way that this discount is the same monetary value as the premium was in the last couple videos. I'm going to go ahead and carry more decimal places, six decimal places, even though I don't have to. In reality, you would really want to round to the nearest cent. But to keep avoiding my, uh, to try to avoid having my errors build up too much, I will keep more decimal places. So it's bought at a discount. That is the outstanding balance at time zero nine two seven point four zero two zero nine six. Let's go ahead and fill in this table as fast as possible, and then we will go back and check some of the entries with these formulas, and think about other kinds of questions you could be asked in such situ situations. All right, so that's the balance. What's the interest at time one? Again, the yield rate is per, per half year is four percent. So I need to take 4% of this, 927 point four zero two zero nine six. times 4%, $37.10. I'll write that as 37.096084. The payment is the coupons. 1,000 times 2%, half of that, $20 payments. Not enough to cover the interest. So the balance is going to go up. It's going to go up ultimately toward a thousand before I have the redemption amount of a thousand, bring it back down to zero. Your principal repaid then will make this balance go up. If I want to use the same formula, I should think of it as a negative quantity. I should still think of it as the payment minus the interest. So subtract this amount from 20 to get a negative number, negative 17.09. 6084 making your balance go up I will let's see I'll take 920 um, I'll subtract this from 927 and by subtracting it from that I will really end up getting a bigger number so put negative there plus 927.402096 the new balance at time one is 944 point four nine eight one eight zero multiply that by four percent the interest owed at time two is thirty seven point seventy eight but the payment is still less than that they're not even covering their interest it's still twenty take twenty minus this to get a negative principal repaid if you thought of it as principal repossessed, so to speak, I guess you'd think of it as a positive quantity then, but again, I want to use the same formulas. That's my motivation. Negate that, add the result to 944 plus 944.49818. Gives a new balance of 962.278107. Times 4%. 38.491124. I didn't write more decimal places up there, and I don't remember what it was. I won't bother writing more. Guess I kept it on my calculator, and it comes from that. Take this and subtract from 20. Negative 18.491124. Negate that to get a positive quantity and add to 962.278107 to get 980.769231. Getting close here, 4% of that. 39.230769. 20 plus 1,000, but I won't write the 1,000 yet. Negative 19.230769. Negate it and add to this, and it should bring me up to 1,000. Yep, gives me 1,000 on the dot, evidently, with no error. 
course, once that happens, you also redeem the bond. You get the redemption amount, which is the power value or face value of a thousand. And that is a positive quantity. I would want to, want to write it as a positive quantity. And now I can do all the totals. And this would go down to zero, by the way. Let's do the totals too. Interest column, 37.096084 plus 37.78. And there would be more decimals, but I'm not going to bother trying to remember what they were. This should still be right to two decimal places to the nearest cent. 152.60 is the total interest paid. Total payments are, well, $80 of coupons plus $1,000 when the bond is redeemed for 1,080 total. This is a dollar sign here, by the way. Dollar sign, oops, dollar sign. The principal repaid, if you add up all those negative quantities, you get a negative quantity. I'll just type it in the calculator as positive though, 17.096084 plus 17.779927 plus 18.491124 plus 19.230769 gives to the nearest cent, 72 or negative 7260. Add on a thousand to that. Make this a negative, add a thousand. In the end, you get 92740, which, if you think about it, should make sense. That is the same as the price that you paid for the bond and you repaid the principal. Okay. All right. So that, that's the totals. Now let's go ahead and check some of these things that we see here. Why don't we check them at time three? So T will be three. So the first one to check is this one, which continues over here. When T equals three, what do we get? Let's go ahead and um, figure out that thing first. So V is this, 1.04 reciprocal. Raise it to the N minus in parentheses T minus one power. Now if T is three, T minus one is going to be two. N is four in this problem, four minus two is two. I'm gonna square this thing, get that. Subtract that from one. Multiply that by the quantity F times in parentheses R minus J. R was 0 0.02, J was 0 0.04. F times that, that ends up being negative 20. We've already seen that. That's the same as the negative 20 here. So multiply this by uh, 20 and think of it as a negative. And then add it to F times J, 1,000 times 0 0.04, which is 40. 38.49, and that is the correct interest amount at this moment in time. Okay, so we confirmed formula B at t equals 3. So that could be useful if you had a problem where it asked you to figure out the interest paid um, at time 3. Let's go on to the next formula and confirm that as well for t equal to 3. We already did it essentially. Uh, again, this is going to be V squared four minus two, T is three. Square this times F times the quantity R minus J, that again is going to be negative 20. Negative 18.49, same thing as that. Let's check the other ones as well here. We've got the total of all the interest paids equals that. Calculating this part first, I guess we already did that. Well, okay, we did not We did it when, uh, okay, we did it at the beginning when we used n equal to four here to find the price. Um, it was a negative quantity up here. Here we're subtracting that negative quantity, so we're ultimately adding the corresponding positive quantity. What was that quantity? It was the 7260. And that's going to get added to the 
n times f times r, which is the sum of all the coupons. The coupons added up to 80. Add this to 80, and you get 152.60, the same as the total interest. Sum of all the pay uh, payments is next. Sum of all the coupons is 80. Then I also said, okay, plus f after, after, after redemption, adding on the extra 1,000, so you get 80 plus 1,000 is 1,080. That's pretty easy. And finally, we add up all the quote-unquote principal repaids. Before redemption, you get this. After redemption, you add on another 1,000. Um, and this will be negative, as this is here. And again, we've done this before. Okay, again, the A4 was 3 point something times negative 20. I guess I better do it again. Goes to the fourth power here. Subtract from 1, divide by 0 0.04, times this thing again is negative 20. Negative 72, 60. That is the same as what we have down here. Then plus 1,000 after redemption brings you to 927.40. So all these formulas were discussed in videos 107 and 108. And now I've reconfirmed them in this context. You have to be a little careful now because R was less than J, so R minus J was negative. But when you think of these PR amounts as negative, all these formulas still work in the same way as before.